Hello, this is Paul Billington presenting another edition of the Bible in the News. Israel is always in the news. At least that has been the case since the modern nation of Israel was established in 1948. And even before that, there was the migration of Jews to the land of Palestine leading to the Balfour Declaration and then to the British Mandate following the First World War. Whenever Israel is in the news today, this background can never be lost sight of. What brought this about? It came about as a result of the belief widely held among Bible believers over two or three centuries that the ancient nation of Israel scattered over the world for some 2,000 years would be regathered to their ancient land in fulfillment of the writings of the prophets of Israel. Many writers held this view, such as, for example, Thomas Brightman in 1615, John Prideaux in 1621, Joseph Mead in 1643, and then Powell in 1673, Pierre Jurieu, Increase Mather, and more in the 1700s, such as Isaac Newton, Thomas Newton, Faber, Irving, Cunningham, Bickersted, and so on. Then there were many more in the 19th century, Alexander Keith, Faber, John Thomas, and Grattan Guinness, and too many more to mention. All this produced a groundswell of religious belief which eventually found itself gaining a foothold among the statesmen and political leaders such as Lord Balfour, Lloyd George, and President Wilson in the United States. But among all these writers and expositors, few had the clarity of vision shown by John Thomas in his book, Elpis Israel, 1849. He had, he had written, There is then a partial and primary restoration of the Jews before the manifestation, which is to serve as the nucleus or basis of future operations in the restoration of the rest of the tribes after he has appeared in the kingdom. The pre-adventual colonization of Palestine will be on purely political principles, and the Jewish colonists will return in unbelief of the messiahship of Jesus and of the truth as it is in him. They will emigrate thither as agriculturists and traders. This remarkable foresight was based upon the prophetic writings of the Old Testament Bible. The distinguished historian Sir Martin Gilbert, who died in February of this year, wrote extensively about the nation of Israel, mapping its history from the birth of the nation to the present. To, uh, to the present. A few years before his death, I had the opportunity of speaking to him about Israel and about the passage from John Thomas's book, Elpis Israel, quoted above. It is rare that such a high-profile and distinguished historian will comment on a book dealing with Bible prophecy. But Sir Martin Gilbert did have something to say about John Thomas's work, and part of the interview that I had with Gilbert was recorded. Here is an extract. Sir Martin, Elpis Israel was written over 150 years ago, and the author, Dr John Thomas, made some remarkable predictions of the Jewish return, basing his remarks on Bible prophecy. How do you view this, first as a historian, and then as a Jewish person? As a, as a historian, I find it very inspiring that someone from a religious perspective should really be so aware of the historical currents of that time. Not just aware of them, but uh, foreseeing them very clearly. So that in 1849, he's talking about, first of all, events which began in 1882. That is, as he puts it so rightly, the political return of individual Jews to set up farming colonies. And then the uh, prediction that there would have to be a, 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 a power, what in those days was called the powers, a great power, uh, which would essentially liberate the land so that the Jews could be could form their commonwealth there. He uses the phrase commonwealth. And it, it was to be some years before this happened. There was a precedent, Palmerston's uh, giving us part of Britain's uh, interest in the area. Palmerston's giving protection to the Jews of Jerusalem, British diplomatic protection. But uh, what... Uh, Dr. Thomas is proposing something much more comprehensive than that. 
and in that sense foreshadows the uh, well, first of all it foreshadows Herzl's uh, political Zionism first Basel Congress 1897 and the Balfour Declaration of 1917 and he talks about British statesmen he's fairly caustic about their abilities at the time that he's writing but he he again envisages a, a, dif- a different calibre of, of statesmen which certainly uh, Balfour and then Churchill and he was in charge of the Palestine mandate in 1921 fit, fit the bill Martin Gilbert was Jewish of course <clears throat> so we can see why he would have a particular interest in Jewish and Israel's history but this raises the question for us as to his own belief in the prophets so it was that I bluntly asked him if he believed in the prophets here is his reply so in your uh, Jewish history atlas, which Christadelphians have made a lot of use of, by the way, over the years, uh, you have a dramatic map there, and I'm sure you'll remember it. It's of the return, 1948-64. And you quote there Ezekiel chapter 11 and verse 17 on, on your map. Uh, and on another page, you quote Isaiah chapter 10, verse 22, a remnant of them shall return. So that raises the question for us. Uh, Sir Martin, do you believe the prophets? I think that a, a Jewish person, unless they're completely, they've completely drifted away from the faith, has to put the, the prophets at the very centre of their understanding of the faith. The without the prophets in a sense there's no evolving Judaism uh, and most of them are prophesying at a time when clearly the Jews have fallen on hard times uh, to a large extent because of their own failings and their own uh, weaknesses and I think without the prophets Judaism becomes a essentially a historic curiosity uh, I mean Obviously, the, the faith, the ethics, the Ten Commandments, the mm. 613 mitzvot, they all would have a relevance today. But in terms of how the Jewish people are going to evolve, I think the prophecies are tremendously important. Um, partly because they do prophesy a, a different state of being for the Jews, and partly because they, they enshrine in the strongest form the ethical precepts which without which the Jews are essentially told they will not achieve this right. position of, of greater grace. Mm-hmm. Martin Gilbert contributed much to our knowledge of Israel's modern history, and his comments upon the passage from Elpis Israel by John Thomas is, value, is a valuable endorsement of what was written about the restoration of the Jews. Elpis Israel is a heavy volume, but as one writer has said of it, it is a well-known book, sorry, it is a well-written book having benefit of being revised some 15 years after first writing. There may be difficulty with some words that are used, but a dictionary to hand will get over this. The real ground of difficulty is reading the, reading the, reading the book. And it, it, it lies not in the style or lack of clear expression, but in the fact of it dealing without compromise or padding with divine ideas. And the difficulty is in the mind raising itself to the divine point of view. This requires patience and persistence with p- prayer and humility. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. To this man will I look, even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit, and trembleth at my word. Isaiah 55, verse 9, and 66, verse 2. Thank you for being with us again for another edition of the Bible in the News.